Donna Blanchard, and this is your Think Tech Daily News for Thursday, March 16th, 2015. There's a new voice speaking up about the heightened conflict in Yemen. Newly appointed Vice President Khaled Baha is calling for a Houthi ceasefire, stating today that the language of reason and dialogue must be given priority. This new tack comes as al-Qaeda forces have taken control of an airport and oil export terminal near the city of al-Mukalla today. As predicted, al-Qaeda is capitalizing on the chaos in Yemen. Exiled President Abu Rabu Mansur Hadi doesn't have a significant base of support in Yemen, and Yemenis backing past President Ali Abdullah Saleh are also backing Houthi efforts. Mr. Baha is the former prime minister and is widely respected as a political figure there. His request for a Houthi ceasefire was answered by a senior Houthi official stating that the Saudi-led bombing campaign had to stop, quote, immediately and without conditions. Let's hope this new dialogue goes somewhere. Three military students in the Egyptian town of Kafr el-Sheikh were killed by a roadside bomb as they were waiting for a bus to take them to their academy in Cairo. This appears to be the latest in a series of attacks by militant groups against members of Egypt's security services, though there was no immediate claim of responsibility. Attacks have increased in recent weeks, and militants have killed hundreds of soldiers, police officers, and members of the state security forces over the last 18 months, most of those in the northern Sinai Peninsula, which is a hotbed of insurgency against the government of President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. The European Union Iran nuclear talks are scheduled to resume next week in Vienna. In a statement issued today, the Union reported that senior negotiator Helga Schmid will meet with Iran's Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Aragchi to pursue an agreement that would restrict Iran to peaceful research in the nuclear area in exchange for the phased lifting of economic sanctions. Use of the words phased lifting in that statement is quite a statement considering the fact that Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei is insisting that those sanctions be lifted immediately upon signing of the agreement scheduled to be delivered in June. President Hassan Rouhani acknowledged that difference today and said there is a difficult path ahead of us toward the final deal but the country's will and decision is to continue the negotiations until a final deal is reached. Here in the United States, Congress has reached agreement on legislation to give President Obama fast-track authority to negotiate an ambitious trade accord with 11 other Pacific nations. The Trade Promotion Authority bill would give Congress the power to vote on the Trans-Pacific Partnership once it is completed, but denies lawmakers the chance to amend what would be the largest trade deal since the Northern American Free Trade Agreement. The legislation would make any final trade agreement public for 60 days before the president signs it and up to four months before Congress votes. If the agreement negotiated by the United States Trade Representative fails to meet the objectives laid out by Congress on labor, environmental, and human rights standards, a 60-vote majority in the Senate could shut off fast-track rules and open the deal to amendment. The human rights portion of that bill never existed in trade agreements before, and we have Oregon Senator Ron Wyden to thank for it. I'm Donna Blanchard, and this has been your Think Tech Daily News for Thursday, April 16th, 2015. Ahoy ho!